Hey babe, do you find anything good? No, no rush. Take your time, we can stay as long as you want. Actually, I really like being here with you. There's, there's just something comforting about being surrounded by all these old books. I could stay here all day. <laughs> yeah, I know we got almost as many at home, but baby, these are new old books. Completely different. They got stories we'd never heard before and possibilities that are entirely new. It's like looking up at the night sky and, uh, and suddenly seeing a whole different set of stars. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I can get a bit carried away. <laughs> you love it, though. <laughs> if you didn't, I'd be in trouble. Uh, you know how much I can ramble, especially where literature is concerned. I guess I'm just lucky to have found someone that's as much of a book nerd as me. You are, honey. You really are. <laughs> Don't give me that. Because I see how big your eyes get every single time we walk in here. No, it's cute. I mean, watching you get excited like that is almost better than the books themselves. Come on. You don't need to get embarrassed, I promise. Look, it's one of the things I love about you. Babe, you had me from the moment you told me you tried to read Ulysses without a study guide. <laughs> well, I said you tried, not that you succeeded. No, it was brave of you to do it. I couldn't have done that. No, it wasn't stupid. Okay, well, maybe a little bit overly ambitious, but not stupid. No, stupid was challenging myself to read all of Infinite Jest in a week. That was stupid. I've always been a fast reader. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> well, I'm glad I've got you around now to remind me to slow down. Now I can just sit back and relax. Enjoy the Tolstoy. Mm, to the extent that anyone can enjoy Tolstoy. I and mean, the man wasn't exactly a fan of happy endings, was he? Well, yeah, I know Anna Karenina is a classic. I'm just saying it doesn't really leave you with a warm, fuzzy feeling. Yes, I know that's not the point. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I concede the point. I guess it is possible to like depressing books if you're in the right sort of mindset. I'm just surprised you're feeling so doom and gloom today. It's a really beautiful day. Yes, the weather does matter. Look, you refuse to read Stephen King at night. I'm allowed to refuse to read Tolstoy on otherwise pleasant days. Nope. I'm going to save War and Peace for my next soul-crushing business meeting. Trust me, I'm going to need it then. Those meetings are so long. I'll probably be able to read it twice before it's over. <sighs> Baby. Would they notice if we just never went back to work? No, hear me out. I got a plan. We just set up a tent right here in the store and live as hermits. We got access to all the books you'd ever want. No job obligations to tie us down. It's brilliant. Well, food's not that important. Besides, I've got that figured out. Anytime we get hungry, we just read one of the fasting meditation books from that weird mindfulness section over by the art stuff. It's a great plan. Come on. Well, I mean, it worked out for Huck Finn. Kind of. Although maybe he was right about rejecting society's standards. Well, the world would be better without so many soul-crushing business meetings, wouldn't it? Back to the point, though. Baby, let's just stay here forever. We can have our own 100 years of solitude. <laughs> I know that's not exactly what we're supposed to take away from the book, but it's a good idea, right? 100 years all to ourselves, no meetings and obligations, no family gatherings with obscure relatives we don't know. 
I know, baby. I know we have to go back, but not just yet. Come on, come on, let's go check out the rare books. I promise I'm not going to buy anything. Really, honest, I promise. I Look, I know that it's not in the budget right now. We're not Gatsby or Daisy. Not that I'd want to be. I'd rather not symbolize any dream that's not our own, American or otherwise. Come on, come on, it's going to be a quick peek. I bet they'll have one of those illustrated copies you love so much. <laughs> yes. Let's start on that shelf over there with all the old cookbooks. Come on, I love the old-timey recipes. Check this out. Betty Crocker's Dinner in a Dish Cookbook from 1965. Let's see what old Betty was cooking up way back then. Okay, um, yeah. She wrote a recipe for tuna and jello pie. No, it's actually exactly what it sounds like. Tuna mixed with lemon jello. I forget how much they loved jello in the 1960s. Looking at this, though, I kind of want to try it. No, no, not enough to actually make it. <laughs> oh, no. No, thank you for the offer, but you're not making it for me unless you're willing to eat it, too. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it's all for the best, anyway. We'd probably just piss off some food god if we made this abomination. Okay, okay, we can be done with the cookbooks. No, I need to look at something that doesn't turn my stomach quite so much, anyway. Why don't you pick the next shelf? Okay. Old adventure books it is. <sighs> Check that out. They got a bunch of really old Jules Verne novels. Let me see. They got 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Around the World in 80 Days, Five Weeks in a Balloon. Yeah, that man was literal when it came to titles, wasn't he? No, I'm actually upset he wasn't even more precise. But yeah, I guess five weeks, three days, seven hours, 12 minutes, and 38 seconds in a balloon doesn't really roll off the tongue now, does it? Hey, writers were paid by the word back then. He could have probably made an extra franc or two if he'd just been a little bit more specific. What? You know I'm right. <laughs> okay. If I were to title this trip to the bookstore, it would be Three Hours in a Bookstore with You Rolling Your Eyes. <laughs> well, I wish I could be more specific, but unfortunately I didn't make note of exactly what time we walked in here. I have to start writing these things down if I ever want to, you know, have a Jules Verne style autobiography. <laughs> sure, I'm going to write it. No. The chapter where we finally got together would be called 80 Days of Awkwardly Not Talking About It. <laughs> I know it wasn't exactly 80 days, but it felt like it. It was worth it, though. There aren't too many people I can spend three hours in a bookstore with. Love you, babe. There, uh, there anything else you wanted to look at? The illustrated fairy tales over there? Cool. Lead the way. Hey, hey, hey. Come here, come here. Come here, look at this. In the glass case, look at that. See that? That's a 1916 printing of the... Yeah. Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. See, the plaque here says it's leather-bound and it comes with 16 original illustrations. Only 125 copies were ever made. And this one's signed by the illustrator. God, that's amazing, isn't it? No, I'm just glad you love Andersen as much as I do. 
Remember that drive-in screening of The Little Mermaid we went to? What was that? Our third date? And what I remember is that after it ended, you couldn't stop yourself going into a tirade about how much more amazing the original fairy tale was. <laughs> stop it. No, it was it was adorable. Loved it. I'd always felt the same way. Just I'd never met anyone that was as passionate about it as you. No. If I hadn't been falling for you already, pretty sure I would have started right then. Um, what's with that look? You actually want to buy it, don't you? No, no, it's okay. I kind of want to buy it too. That's a fantastic piece and I'd love to share this with you. Ugh, look how expensive it is though. No... No, I'm not saying we can't get it. I'm just... <sighs> I'm envisioning all those soul-crushing business meetings I'm going to have to go to to afford this. Ugh. Hey, no, it's not, it's not that bad a trade-off. <laughs> I'm being melodramatic. No, it's, it's totally worth it to watch you just light up every day when you see it. Come here. Hmm. Besides, if nothing else, it's going to give me an excuse not to go to my cousin Larry's wedding up in Virginia next month. Yeah, it's minion themed. No, like the minions from Despicable Me. Yeah, I don't get it either. Now, if we're going to blow a few months' paychecks, I'd rather it be on something we like. So... Moment of truth. Do you really want it? Mm. Me too. <laughs> Come on, let's go find the manager. Oh, this is the best impulse purchase ever. 